process of technical improvement, clearly visible in the long-term view, seemed to be stalling in the last Olympic cycle. No new elements of technique were to be seen at the Rome Championships. Only a look into the past can thus indicate the directions of further development. The present state of the technical execution of the discus throw can be demonstrated by the best athletes, men and women, who've competed in top events for two or more Olympic cycles. The discus throw contest was a demonstration of the present day level of technique, which has undergone a marked change since the early 20th century. Throwing from a from a square meter from a circle was laid down by the changing rules, which have enabled a lengthening of the discus path, resulting in the present day turn technique. The technique of the throw has been clearly influenced by the knowledge of the laws of the movement of the human body by training methods, and by the expansion of the athlete's strength and speed potential. The first world records. The stability of technique and performance is influenced by a number of details that determine the quality of the athlete's movement chain. The following biomechanical analyses look at the most important of these factors. of the path of the discus in the ground plan makes it possible to study the motion of the discus in the crucial moments. Poor action of the right leg and landing in the rear half of the circle with the trunk straightened. A more energetic lead into the turn and a forward bend of the trunk against the direction of the throw give a better chance of accelerating the implement along a longer path. The final phase of the throw depends on a correct two support stance. The left foot landing on the right side limits pelvis rotation and the motion of the arm with the discus. An excellent position of the legs ahead of the arm with the discus and a fine balance. Late planting of the left foot in relation to the position of the discus. Here on the contrary, the double support phase is taken up in time and with the implement above the shoulders, the discus path in the delivery stage is longer. Premature shifting of the body weight to both legs with the trunk straightened already turning in the direction of the movement. A pronounced bend of the trunk and the shifting of the body weight to the right leg make it possible to extend the path of the discus in the final phase of the throw. An analysis of the synchronic pictures makes it possible to assess the kinematic values of the movement of the discus in three-dimensional space. of the white vertical line represents the vertical deflections of the position of the discus in the course of the throw. Three-dimensional representation makes it possible to visualize the length and character of the discus path in the individual phases of the throw, bounded by the focal point. The discus path in the single support phase in the flight phase in the second single support and double support positions in the course of the delivery. Different techniques are manifested in the different course of the discus path.
gradual engaging of the body segments aims at the optimum release of the implement. The fluent turning of the right leg in the first phase of the throw maintains the continuity of the body's natural rotary movement ahead of the discus. In this case, the right foot remains stationary, not continuing in the rotary movement. The discus thus gets into an awkward position before the release. Premature shifting of body weight to both legs and arresting the trunk movement forward and upward reduces the efficiency of the transfer of the kinetic energy from the legs to the trunk, the arm and the discus. right leg and the bending of the trunk make for a better utilization of the athlete's strength in accelerating the implement in the final phase of the throw. The release is of crucial importance for the resulting performance. From the point of view of aerodynamics, the athlete must choose the proper throwing direction, discus angle, and impart a corresponding rotation to the implement. Your jump reduces the efficiency of the final phase of the throw, increasing at the same time the risk of fouling. The throw in a firm double support position, completed without subsequent violent movements, is the best evidence of a dynamic balance. of the gradual engaging of the biokinematic chain in the final phase of the throw. the discus center of mass into the ground plan in one of Delis's trials shows a pronounced shortening of the path after the right foot touchdown less than 3.5 meters three-dimensional projection of the path of the discus center of mass
shorter scope of the action of the right foot in the single support and no support phase indicates that the moment of inertia was not utilized for speeding up the right foot touchdown. Schultz achieves a discus path that is substantially longer than Delis's, particularly after the right foot touchdown. The difference is over one meter. The path of the body center of mass in the course of delivery. More significant vertical amplitudes and a steeper path of the implement before release. A broader action of the legs in the course of delivery. phase of the throw. Extraordinary vertical amplitudes of the discus center of mass that facilitate the lengthening of the discus path and the chances of accelerating the implement in the final part of the delivery. A textbook example of the wide action of the right leg in the single support and no support phase. The bronze medals were won by Diana Gansky of the German Democratic Republic and John Powell of the United States. The silver medals went to Sid 